Well, good morning, everyone, and a very warm welcome to St. Peter's for our cafe church service with a difference. Uh, if we were having a normal cafe church, we'd all be rearranged around coffee tables. I guess those of you that are watching at home, I've just sort of spoiled it really, because you could imagine that that's what in fact we are doing this morning, but I'm afraid it's not, um, because as you know, I'm looking out on a sea of wonderful face masks in front of me, um, and thank you all for those of you that are here at St. Peter's this morning, welcome to our service, but also welcome to you at home if you're watching on our Facebook page or YouTube channel. And as I said earlier, this is Cafe Church with a Difference, because I have my mug here. And oh, I have a, I'm also being shown a, another container at the back here. So I think we need to, actually what we could get into on Cafe Church Sundays, I think we need to get into sort of competition. We've got another container there, excellent. Um, so if you want to bring along a coffee mask or a water flask or whatever to Cafe Church, then please feel free to do so. Of course, those of you at home have an advantage over us on that front. I must confess you have many advantages over us in one sense in these services. Uh, like you don't have to wear a face mask for starters. And just in case you're wondering, I am the only person that I, fortunately, the government relented in their guidance uh, in the sense of they're allowing people who speak from the front not to wear face masks, but unfortunately everyone else has to uh, throughout the service. So this morning we are going to kick off with a song. Uh, this is a song called Lord I Come To You. Um, if you are at home, it's, I'm, also, I'm almost going to make it a requirement that you have to sing. I think, I, think there, I think there should be certain things that people have to do if they're going to be at home because Unfortunately, those of us that are in church are not allowed to sing. Um, so we are learning to what we call worship silently uh, to our songs. But if you're at home, you can raise your proverbial roof if you would like to. But we're going to uh, worship silently in church and we're going to listen to the song, Lord, I Come to You. i 
up like a girl and I'm a song with you. Your spirit leads me on in the power of your love. Thank you very much, John, for leading us in our worship. Now, this morning, we are going to reflect a little bit about on caring for ourselves. And we're going to start off with watching a video. During lockdown, uh, we've got a new video star at St. Peter's, and I'm sure some of you have seen her um, on a few videos during lockdown. And we've got another video this morning from Lucy. So I'm going to hand over to Lucy. Some people are feeling a bit afraid to go to new schools because um, there's lots of new classes they have to go in and also some of them are a bit scared and sad because just every time they have to keep changing classrooms and classrooms and classrooms so it isn't really nice that they have to be sad so all they have to do is take in a care box and find something to help them and also the care box the care box can also help them pray about things to God and talk to him and lots of things. Let's get making. Post-it notes. To remind you to write down your blessings every day. To remind you that it's okay to make mistakes. A puzzle piece. To remind you that our gods we are not complete. Some love hearts. To remind you that God loves you. Musical instrument. To remind you, you can praise God and be happy. An acorn. To remind you, that God wants us to talk to him. Some fairy lights or a candle. To remind you to share your light with others. Thank you everyone, bye. We may not be allowed to sing, but we can actually clap. I think we ought to give Lucy a round of applause. What a fantastic. She's a video star, isn't she? Well done, Lucy. I think perhaps we ought to also 
just say a big thank you to mummy Katie, I think, because I think you know, she did a fair bit on that as well. Let's give Katie a round of applause as well. Okay, thank you both very much. Well done. Okay, so Lucy gave us lots of practical uh, suggestions of ways in which we can care for ourselves. And we're going to sort of uh, unpack and reflect a little bit on that now. I wonder what your sort of reaction is when I talk about caring for yourself. Because I think perhaps one reaction we might have is, well, caring for oneself, perhaps it sounds a little bit selfish. And maybe that's not particularly Christian. Shouldn't we really be caring for others rather than caring for ourselves? Well, it's interesting. When we uh, read what Jesus had to say about it. In fact, if we go to Jesus' teaching on the most, the two most important commandments of all, some of you may remember that what Jesus said was the two most important commandments of all are firstly, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor. Apart from that isn't entirely what he said. He did say, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And he did say, love your neighbor. But he added, love your neighbor as you love yourself. So that's quite interesting when we reflect on that. Although we are commanded to love God and to love our neighbor, the, our love of our neighbor should be a reflection of how we love ourselves. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. So Jesus seems to be implicitly saying you should love yourself. Indeed, in many ways, the love of our neighbor will flow out of a love for ourselves. Now, without getting too sort of um, psychological or whatever, um, it is interesting, isn't it, that there is a sense in which each of us does have a relationship with ourselves, so to speak. There is a sort of I me relationship. We have a, do you know what I mean? We have a sort of relationship with ourselves in terms of how we see ourselves, how we're getting along with ourselves. And sometimes, if we're honest, that's not always perhaps a great relationship. Perhaps sometimes we struggle to actually have a good relationship with ourselves. And that can so easily flow over into our relationships with others. The way that we see ourselves, the way that we treat ourselves, the way that we care for ourselves or don't care for ourselves can so often be reflected in the way that we then treat others. So I want to read a story to you that we read about in the Bible. It's a story of two sisters called Mary and Martha. And I think this helps us to understand a little bit uh, what it means to love ourselves. This is a story that Luke records for us in chapter 10 of his gospel. He writes, as Jesus and his disciples went on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha welcomed him in her home. She had a sister named Mary, who sat down at the feet of the Lord and listened to his teaching. Martha was upset over all the work she had to do. So she came and said, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her to come and help me. The Lord answered her. Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled over so many things, but just one thing is needed. Mary has chosen the right thing, and it will not be taken away from her. So there we have a story of two sisters, Mary and Martha. And I don't know what you were sort of thinking of when I was sort of reading that passage, but whenever I read that passage, I've got this sort of, I've got this sort of picture of Martha frantically rushing around everywhere. She's desperately trying to get everything ready for Jesus because the most important thing of all, of course, is to have everything ready. So she's busy doing the cooking, she's busy doing the dusting, she's busy doing the hoovering, first century hoovering, probably not quite, but you know what I mean. She's, she's busy trying to get everything ready for Jesus. 
And I have to confess, I have quite a lot of sympathy for Martha because I think that's, I've got a bit of a sort of a Martha in me, I think, really. But the interesting thing is, it's what Jesus says to her. And he says to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about so many things. See, what Martha has perhaps unwittingly done is that her frantic activity has, to Jesus at least, it has slightly, it has betrayed a little bit what's going on under the surface in her life. Because it's actually a reflection of what's going on inwardly within her. She's madly dashing around, and she's madly dashing around because deep down, when you really get under the surface, so to speak, which of course is an uncanny knack that Jesus had, didn't he, to get under the surface of things. Jesus recognizes that Martha is not at peace within herself. She is not at peace within herself. And that's what's driving her to focus on all the externals and to get everything ready and to busy around and things like that. And Jesus says, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about so many things. Whenever I read that story of Martha, I can't help thinking about my mum. Now, my mum passed away 18 years ago. And I was very close to my mum. And I still miss her to this day. I loved her. I love her enormously. She was a wonderful woman, but she was a great warrior. My mum always seemed to have something to worry about. Indeed, I think she would worry if she wasn't worrying. She would have to worry about not being able to find something to worry about if she didn't, if you get my drift. She had to have something to worry about. And that sadly seemed to that sadly seemed to sort of flow out of her and that's what she sort of projected often to other people of course when you got to know her as i did you saw a slightly sort of different person really and how great she was but she was a great warrior and that was reflected in the fact that she was madly dashing around often she was like martha she was madly dashing around trying to get everything ready often for me. She was a fantastic mum, but she was worried and troubled by so many things. And as I've reflected on that over the years, the sad reflection I've come to is that it was a sign that sadly, she wasn't really at peace within herself, with herself coming back to this idea of the relationship that each of us has with ourselves. She wasn't at peace with herself. And in that sense, sadly, she, in a sense, wasn't able to care for herself because she was so busy caring for other people. And in many ways, that is a great attribute. But it's also sad because Jesus did say that we should care for other people, love other people as we love ourselves. We should care for ourselves as well. And I've often thought my mum reflected a little bit what Martha was like. Of course, in saying all of that about my mum, of course, I realise that I'm my mother's son. And so the penny begins to drop on me. Tim, you're saying these things about your mum, but you're saying them about yourself. Because of course, I am my mother's son and I have inherited in many ways uh, some of my mother's characteristics. And so it's easy for all of us to look outside to other people uh, even near ones and dear ones, 
and to be able to sort of say, you know, they're a little bit like Martha or whatever it might be. But we need to look at ourselves as well. And I can see the Martha in me, just as I can see the Martha in my mum. Of course, in contrast, in that story, there's Martha's sister, Mary. And I, I, I do struggle sometimes, as I'm sure many people do, that we sort of think, well, it was all right for her, wasn't it? It's all right for her, Martha's running around all over the place. It's all right for her, she can just sit and listen to Jesus. But you see, Jesus commended Mary, and rightly so, because she realized what was important in that moment. Yes, of course, there is a time when we do need to do, do this, do that, do the other. We do need to obviously do things. And I'm sure there were times when Mary was busying herself as well. But she realized that in that moment with Jesus in her home, the time was to put all the other things to one side and to come and sit and listen to Jesus. And perhaps the question for us in our lives is, and this is where the tricky bit comes for all of us, is to be able to work out when those, because of course it's easy to sort of paint that picture of Mary and Martha as an either or, and that's not really true, I don't think. Because of course there are times when all of us need to uh, be busy. But the question for all of us is, when are those times in our lives when we do need to set the busyness aside and be still and be quiet with Jesus? And that can be difficult for some of us, particularly if our sort of temperament is more like a Martha than a Mary. And it can also be difficult if we find it difficult to be still and to be quiet. Because again, that can sometimes be a reflection of how comfortable we are with ourselves. Are we at peace with ourselves to be able to be still and to be quiet in God's presence? Because that can be a difficult thing as well. And perhaps an encouragement to help us do that is something that Jesus uh, taught about that actually John records in his gospel in, a, in another passage in chapter 15. There, John uses, uh, there, Jesus uses the picture of himself being a vine. Of course, vineyards would have been very common in Jesus' day uh, in Palestine. And he uses the image of himself being a vine and us being the branches. And he talks about the need for us to abide in him, to live in him. Or perhaps another way to put it is to rest in him. He is the vine and we are the branches. And in order to remain connected to the vine, Jesus says we need to rest in him. And so perhaps the most important way in which we can care for ourselves is to rest in Jesus. To take those times when we are still and quiet in God's presence, recognizing that he loves us. We can be at peace within ourselves because we are at peace with God because of what God has done for us in Jesus. We can rest in Jesus. And as we care for ourselves in doing that, then as Jesus says, that will help us to love our neighbor as we love ourselves, to love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and also to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. So may God help each one of us to care for ourselves, in a funny sort of way, one of the most important relationships we have in life is actually the relationship we have with ourselves. 
It might sound a strange thing to say. And the way in which we can grow healthily in that relationship with ourselves is to abide in Jesus. So we're going to sing a song now. And uh, this indeed is a song called Abide in Him. I have a home and our home is with Jesus. And so John's going to lead us. Please sing along at home. We're going to worship silently to the song Abide in Him. Thank you very much, John, again. Vanessa, I wonder if I can ask you to come and join me up the front here. That would be great. Vanessa, if you'd like to grab the microphone that's uh, on the stand there, that would be great. We'll make sure we're about this far apart. That's fine. Okay, great. Um, so we're going to explore a little bit about, well, some of the things we've already been thinking about, but maybe some other things as well. So Vanessa, um, in that story about Mary and Martha, we saw someone in uh, Martha who was very anxious. And maybe particularly in the times that we've been living over the last few months, many of us have perhaps struggled with a sense of anxiety. So how do you feel that uh, we people can... Uh, have you got any suggestions for us about how we can perhaps overcome anxiety in our lives? Um, I mean, I can... Yeah, if you put it probably right up. I can talk um, from my own perspective. 
that I've really suffered with anxiety quite badly during lockdown. I've always suffered with anxiety all my life, uh, but I found the best way is to talk to family and close friends, even if you can't see them. I mean, the difficult bit was when nobody could see anybody and um, we were all at home. So um, there's Zoom calls and just talking to family and obviously talking, you know, talking to Steve a lot during lockdown. Um, one thing that happened in lockdown um, to help the anxiety was I've been trying to get Steve for about the last 10 years to go out for a walk and now we go out for a walk most mornings just to look around um, and I just find that there's God's presence in that and um, just looking at all the nature when you walk because when you're in your car all the time you're not seeing what's actually around you and it's just looking at all the nature that's around you and um, you know and God's you know God's done that for us um, and I pray about my anxiety, especially at night, because I have trouble sleeping. Okay. So I just pray that I'll be able to get to sleep. Um, but the main thing is to keep a close network of friends and just people that you can talk to and um, just discuss your anxieties with, really. Great. So if we think about those sort of networks for a moment, we've got sort of, you know, obviously there's... Um, immediate family, close family, and maybe extended family, um, obviously friends, maybe the support of the church as well. Yeah. How can those sort of support networks uh, help in difficult times? Um, I mean, I've had quite a few difficult periods over the years, and um, I've got a close, um, you know, close family, and I talk to Steve, and I've, um, you know, been blessed with a loving husband and two beautiful daughters, and obviously I talk to them, but um, the church, my church family is also as important and over the years um, we've had a lot of answers to prayer um, 10 years ago Steve was diagnosed with cancer at the same time as losing his job and um, with all the prayer we had a lot of prayer support and help from different sources that we didn't that weren't expected and we you know God always put food on the table for us we you know we were always able to provide for our family I don't know how, but we were always able, and it was through, you know, God doing all those things for us. Yeah. Um, when I was, when the children were tiny, I had um, counselling myself because I was very anxious that I wasn't a good enough mum. I wouldn't, you know, didn't, basically didn't know what to do, and um, and I was afraid that it would affect the children. So I sought help, and also um, we, I spent a long time talking to Bill and Judith um, about my anxieties and everything. We came through it, and they flourished into the girls that they are today. And a lot of prayer uh, went into that as well. So I've had to work hard. I've had to work hard to, um, you know, to get rid of the anxiety. Um, and it's just so important to build up a support network that you can go to if you have a problem rather than suffering it on your own because I find that I overthink things and then I, um, I just, um, it all becomes too much. Mm. But when I've discussed it with somebody, the problem is halved or quartered. Um, and I, something that I took away from my counselling was to have things to look forward to even if it's, you know, spending time with the grandchildren, just going out for a walk, just, um, you know, visiting my other daughter in London. Um, it's just the thing that's helped me over the years, and I still do that now, and it was 20, about 23 years ago since I had my counselling, and I've, that's one strategy that I've never forgotten. And, um, I'm, you know, I'm a good listener. If people want to talk to me, yeah, then I'm yeah. always there. It's about um, being, being there for others. But I think to be supportive to others, you have to try and help, help yourself to get that, to be in that place, to be able to help, which is why it's important to try and, you know, get help for yourself, really. Um, I also did a journal uh, when I was really struggling, and wrote a journal every day. And then you can look back on that. If you write a diary or something, you can look back on how you were feeling and how you overcome the obstacles. Mm, that's great. And you mentioned some of the difficult times that you've gone through in the past. And there's a sense in which, obviously, this, in a sense, it's been a sort of a collective difficult yeah. time that we've all sort of gone through in different ways over the last few months. And, uh, of course, one of the phrases that people are using now is, 
um, the new normal. Yeah. I know, although I don't think, I'm not sure any of us quite work well. I think by definition, none of us really know what that's going to be. But, was, but there is a sense in which, um, whereas of course, when we went into lockdown, that was just so sudden, wasn't yeah. it? We suddenly, we suddenly went from normality into lockdown. And now we're in this sort of slow process, which is sort of morphing into some sort of new normality that none of us yeah. know about, but it's not quite what the old normal was and all the rest of it. And so as we sort of begin to get back to some sort of sense of normality, um, how do you think we can sort of uh, care for ourselves and help ourselves as we get back to normal? I mean, I think there will be a new normality, whatever that will be. Um, I just pray that people will appreciate the existence of the Lord Jesus and learn about what he can do for them. And it certainly made me think, um, several things. Is there a better way of living our lives? Um, should we be living our lives differently? I mean, I'm, I'm a great shopper, or I was before um, lockdown, and now I can just about do the, um, the food shopping. I don't do the, um, the luxuries now. I don't go shopping, um, you know, for clothes and things like that. Mm. I've stopped doing that. And it's taught me uh, what's important in life is the family and friends mm. being able to, you know, and I really struggled without being able to see people. Um, and that it's just made me realize that it's not the material things that we um, need. It's the, you know, the friends and the, the family, you know, the church family. Also, my work have been very supportive. I'm working from home and um, I speak to my manager every week. We have supervision once a month. And she's, so I've told her about my anxiety and we talk around it. Um, and they're always there if, you know, to listen to, because obviously we can talk about the work, uh, work anxieties and things. And, um, That's great. Uh, and, you know, Jesus provides the answer and um, it's made me content with the little things, but I just wanted to end with a, a phrase that my auntie told me 30 years ago. My auntie was a strong Christian, and she said to me 30 years ago, and I've never forgotten this, you have to go through the darkness to come into the light. And I certainly found this through my life. And I think, um, think of my auntie when I go through diff difficult situations, and you certainly do, you don't see it at the time. It might be a couple of years down the line, but you always come out you know, through the darkness into the light. Oh, very true. Yeah. That's great. Vanessa, thank you ever so much indeed. Let's give Vanessa a round of applause. <laughs> thank you very much indeed. We're going to spend some time in prayer now. Judith's going to lead us in our prayers uh, from a video. And so uh, I'm going to hand over to Judith as we pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for bringing us safely to the beginning of a new day. We pray that as we gather together here in church or from our homes, we may know that you are with us and sharing in everything we do and say today. Thank you for the world we live in, for the trees and flowers, the animals and birds, the fields and the oceans, the earth and the sky. Please help us to enjoy it, to treasure it, and help us to all do our very best to look after the wonderful world you created for us to live in. In the last few days, schools have reopened for a new year. We know it doesn't feel the same in some ways, so please help all the children, young people and staff to settle into new ways of working quickly. We thank you for all the work the teachers and staff have been doing to get ready for life in school in strange times and ask for patience, tolerance and understanding for everybody. Please help the children and young people not to worry too much, but to trust the grown-ups around them who will always be doing their very best to keep them happy and safe. Be especially close to those starting new schools, colleges and universities and those little people starting school for the very first time. Whilst for many the world is returning to some kind of normal, for many it's not. We pray again for those who are worrying about jobs, money and health. Please guide them to the help that is available for them. 
Thank you for the volunteers and food banks who are still helping so many and those helping in the community. We ask that we will all do our very best to stay safe, follow the guidelines so that we can protect ourselves and those around us. Please be especially close to all those who are not well and those who care for them. We know that you are with us in all the trials that life throws at us. Help us to trust in you and your unfailing love. We know that God isn't just to be found here in church, far from it. You can see him everywhere, all the time. While I was doing a bit of tidying up in my garden, I was looking at the leaves on the trees. It struck me that they were a constant reminder of God's love, of how God's love goes right through us at different times of our lives. Leaves have veins that go from the stem to the very tip of the leaf that enables the water to come from the trunk, the tree trunk, into the branches and through the stem into the leaf. Just like God's love flows through us and feeds us, giving us life. This leaf is a very healthy leaf. You can see the veins going all the way, all the way right to the very ends and right to the very tip of this leaf. God's love is clearly visible here in this leaf. This leaf is looking a little bit tired and not terribly happy, but you can still see all the veins going from the stem all the way to the tip, out to the edges. God's love is still visible here. This leaf is close to the end of its life. God's love is still clearly visible in the veins of this leaf. Thank you, Lord, that you have provided us with all these reminders around your world that you are with us wherever we are. So go with us into this new week, we pray, and help us to shine as lights in your world to your praise and glory. Amen. Thank you very much, Judith. So we're going to finish with a song this morning. This is a song that both reflects the struggles that we all face in life. It talks about in my wrestling and in my doubt. Um, but it also reflects the fact that Jesus can be, as it were, a lighthouse uh, of safety for us if we abide in him, if we rest in him, as we've been thinking about this morning. So uh, we're going to have the song, uh, In My Wrestling and In My Doubts, My Lighthouse. Uh, and uh, John's going to lead us, and uh, you can sing at home. We're going to worship silently in church.
John and thank you to all of you for coming this morning. Next week, because it's the second Sunday of the month, I'm going to be taking the service at St. Oswald. Some of you know that uh, the second Sunday I'm always at St. Oswald's, which means that uh, there will be a service in church, but it will be a pre-recorded one, which will be shown on the screen. So there will be a service here next Sunday at 10.30, but it will all be pre-recorded uh, so that you can watch it on the screen. There'll be nothing live as such. Uh, but uh, please do come along next Sunday for uh, the pre-recorded service. And uh, if you've been watching this morning on uh, Facebook or St. Peter's YouTube channel, uh, thank you for joining us. It's been great to have you with us and have a great week. And uh, we'll look forward to seeing you next week.